Okay, so going into transcription, just a reminder, the same three steps are going to be presented for transcription. So that's gonna be initiation, elongation, and termination. And then I will highlight a few key uh, highlights that are specific to transcription. So with DNA replication, we basically want to replicate the entire genome because the cells are dividing and we wanna make sure each daughter cell has the full genome. With transcription, we're looking finally at gene expression, right? So how does our DNA contribute to our creating a full organism and how do the genetic variants actually lead to our diversity as a human race or as other organisms have diversity? So with transcription, we have initiation once again, but instead of helicase un unwinding the double helix, we have RNA polymerase that binds at the promoter of a gene. And so as I mentioned before, genes make up about 1% of our coding genes make up about 1% of our genome. And the way that we, the RNA polymerase can find these genes in our 3 billion base pairs of genetic information is you at these promoter sequences. So it's a very sequence specific recognition that the RNA polymerase will bind to. And then other transcription factors will come along and also bind to that region to allow for cell type specific expression, which enables cells to have their own particular functions. Elongation occurs with RNA polymerase two, rather than DNA polymerase. And so RNA is synthesized from what is called the template strand. And again, this is in the five prime to three prime direction. So you can see here, we have our non-template strand is this top strand, which is always listed as five prime to three prime. Then we have our template strand here, and we see that the, synth the elongating RNA is being synthesized this direction, five prime to three prime. And you can make note here, where we see the complementary base pairs being added, G to C, T to A, you'll notice that the, instead of a T being added complementary to the A, we have a U. So this is what's specific to RNA compared to DNA. Uh, and then I just wanted to go over a few other terms that are used for these different strands because they are used very widely in human genetics. Yeah. Uh, so Sam just asked what the U is, and that's uracil. So that's another uh, base pair that's used. Instead of thymine and DNA, we have that in RNA. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. The other terms that I wanted to list for you uh, th that we like use to describe these two different strands, just because it can get a little bit confusing. Um, so we have here the template strand, and that makes sense because we have the RNA being, you know, like elongated from that template strand. So then this is actually the non-template strand. But the non-template strand is also called the sense strand or the coding strand. And the reason for that, you can see pretty clearly, is if you were to look at this sense strand or coding strand, the top one, you can see that the RNA is pretty much an exact replicate of that, except for instead of T's, we have U's, right? So here we have G, C, A, C, T instead of U, then C, A, U, right? And so that's why it's called the sense or coding strand. And the template strand is also called the anti-sense strand or the non-coding strand. All right, and then with termination for transcription, there are, there's a region of the, at the end of the gene that signals that it's time to stop transcription, to terminate, and then we have RNA processing. So that includes adding a five prime cap and a poly A tail. Those are features of the mature messenger RNA that kind of help keep it protected as it goes out into the cytoplasm. So remember, DNA stays in the nucleus where it's kind of protected, but the RNA has to go out into the cytoplasm, into the war zone to create the proteins, right? And so we have these two different processing factors that are added. And then another major component of the mature mRNA processing is splicing. So uh, genes are made up of exons, which are con called coding because they contain the trinucleotide codons that will ultimately be used to encode the amino acids for the polypeptide chain. And we also have introns. You carry a Eukaryotic DNA also, or genes also have introns, which are non-coding. They do not contribute to the final polypeptide sequence, and so they need to be spliced out before the mRNA goes into the cytoplasm. And so after this splicing, we have our mature mRNA, which can be translocated into the cytoplasm to move on to create the protein. <coughs> 